Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, a Let's Play tutorial series. Before I get started, I would like to share with you my plans for the rest of this series. And these plans may change depending on how well the campaigns go. My plan is to try to fully conquer Volandia and see if that makes the game easier. If they constantly rebel, and I'm having to constantly repel the uh, the ex Volandians when they have no territory, I'm likely to just claim victory and end the series with me conquering all of Volandia, also owning most of what Western Empire was, uh, given that in the beginning of this series, we voted that I would side against the Western Empire, or rather all empires, and I would have to say that that has been done in spades. Um, now, the alternative, which may happen, the alternative is if I find that fully conquering Volandia makes them much easier to deal with, I will stretch this series out even longer. I know, I know, right? Um, to chew up the remaining factions if possible. I don't think that's likely. If I was to put money on it, it'd be a five to one ratio that once I conquer all of Volandia, we call it quits. Uh, but we'll have to see where we go from here. I don't really have an answer. Mostly it is because of all of the frustrating mechanics that have been introduced most recently. Um, I'm sure you are all aware of said mechanics, like my companions donating to garrisons when I don't want, my vassals warmongering like crazy, my companions uh, dying at accelerated rates. Uh, all of these mechanics make the mount and blade experience less pleasurable. Now, I know that you could say, hey, why don't you roll back? Why don't you play a previous version? I could do this, but it would be a dishonest experience. Uh, honestly, most people that play Mount and Blade are going to play on the default branch, and I don't really want to show uh, mods or maximizing the gameplay by switching branches. I think this is probably easily understood. If this is a tutorial series, I can't be showing a tutorial as I have modified the experience to fit my uh, desires and needs. That's not so much what a tutorial means. All right, so here we are at Veriscand Castle. Uh, I think most of our border tutor uh, territories are being heavily besieged by Botania and Kuzait. Uh, Uthlame Castle did just get defended by Sarandon, despite the fact that I've given it to someone else. I kind of feel bad now. Um, Sarandon wanted it, but I essentially told him no, and uh, he was the one to defend it. Generally speaking, I like to reward territory to those who will keep it safe, and it seemed like he spent the effort to keep it safe. So there is yet another castle. I think probably it was my Jorugus or whatever it's called. My guess is that was my castle. And it got captured, uh, no surprise, by uh, Kuzate. Kuzate has been tearing up my territories uh, because I'm just not there to defend them. Oh, that is not the loadout I meant to have. No, I'm not gonna dual wield a Rumfai <laughs> and a mount Mountain Blade. That doesn't make any sense. So I am very much hoping that these wars go smoothly, but given what I've experienced in the last, I don't know, maybe let's say 20 episodes or so, uh, I don't have a lot of hope. Essentially, I would phrase it as, this game plays really well uh, up until you get to a point where you have to manage large kingdoms, and then it very much falls apart. The first two thirds are better than the last third is fair. Now, given that information, I would still say the first two thirds of the game feel fun, but if you're a completionist like me, 
uh, you aren't going to be satisfied with playing two thirds of a game and then quitting. I usually play games through. And with that information, yes, uh, this game does get frighteningly frustrating uh, once you are done with the, you know, make your own clan, form your own kingdom, carve out a little bit of land. Uh, once you've carved out a little bit of land, it's like, oh, okay. All the, everything falls apart from here. I mean, that might be an unfair exaggeration, but, uh, but I do have, I don't know, 20 hours, 30 hours of video, videography proof of, uh, said falling apart. So, I will also add that uh, the original game, Mount and Blade, not, this is of course Mountain Blade 2, Mountain Blade took about 10 years of patching uh, to get to where it is today. It released about 10 years and change ago. Uh, so, I'm not saying there isn't hope for this game. They will fine tune it and uh, craft it into hopefully what is more than a, you know, a masterpiece of bit. Oh, there's so many people shooting at me. I always forget that uh, besieging Volandians is so scary because these crossbows do such immense amounts of damage. Crossbows were, in real life, a great equalizer because um, it took considerable skill shooting bows. And you had to tra do a lot of training, which meant that um, peasants and sort of militia weren't going to really be all that capable of firing bows effectively. And then the crossbow was invented, and it was thought to be a weapon of the devil because it made uh, shooting so much more uh, easy that the fatalities from the crossbow were great. Uh, almost to the point where the crossbow in the early stages of gunpowder uh, outpunched gunpowder. That's how devastating crossbows were. They were just so ridiculously deadly. Uh, with that said, the some of the most skilled longbowmen still would be able to outrange and outfire a crossbow. Because um, crossbows were as deadly as they were, they were still they didn't require as much mastery, and you could become better at uh, firing bows. But uh, but I digress. Yes, the crossbow was a great equalizer. It was the killer of knights because most heavy pole bows weren't wielded by like farmers and peasants, weren't all that capable of piercing armor. And then the crossbow that could be wielded by children uh, could punch through thick armor with relative ease. And, and that's due to the crank action of the crossbow. You're able to crank it with both hands, um, you know, load a bolt up, and then steady your aim. Whereas with a bow, uh, you're pulling it back mostly with one shoulder, and then you are aiming while under, you know, immense uh, tension. Crossbow, of course, is tensionless once aiming, means it's a lot easier to fire. I've fired both crossbows and bows in real life, and uh, I could tell you, with little skill that I have, uh, it's a lot easier to hit a target with a crossbow than a bow. And with primitive guns, I've never fired a primitive gun, but I'd imagine that like the very early primitive uh, muskets and the like weren't all that accurate and and also took a long 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 time to reload and the like uh, that was actually one of the uh, chief reasons why they weren't devastating weapons of war early on because they weren't fast and if you're trying to shoot a whole lot of people speed is paramount And then the speed issues more or less got fixed around the time of the American Civil War. Do you like this little history lesson you're all getting from me? I hope so. Um, where you started getting Gatling guns and uh, repeaters and things like that. Um, they existed pre 
uh, sort of Civil War era, but um, not in mass production. The interchangeable parts uh, really ramped up weapon production once um, once it was very easy to to mass produce weapons. Uh, they really became, you know. Uh, Jacqueline will be mine. Thank you. It was mine. It will be mine. So yeah, all right, that's that's the extent of the history lesson you're getting today. Back to gameplay. So here we captured a castle. I leveled up in bows. So increased morale of ranged troops in my party. Uh, I haven't really seen that uh, morale has been an issue for me. Um, or ranged troops gain 10% of the total XP after battles. That sounds terrific. Raptor Talon also leveled up, has a free focus point. Uh, let's put that towards bows yet again. I think that's everybody. Oh, I should have managed Garrison. But I doubt my uh, nincompoops probably donated. Now, I know leaving no one in the garrison uh, means that it's going to get besieged quickly, uh, but that will also draw Valandian would-be besiegers out of hiding and coming to my, uh, uh, coming to attack me, so, like these guys. Oh, I just cohesively disbanded. <laughs> That's embarrassing. All right. Well, I added some cohesion there using my influence. Uh, if you take a look, Taviel Castle and Abcomer, I think we're under siege and they are no more. I'm going to try to clean up Valanian territory with a clean sweep. Okay, bye-bye. Whoever that was, they're very dead. Jacqueline got besieged by the King of Valandia. Alright, well, I wanted to keep pushing forward, but uh, forward is not going to happen. Oh, uh, another issue is Yanshui. Okay, so I am missing some of my companions because of the stupid donation uh, mechanic. So, uh, Yanshui here... He is no longer in my party. Dayman and Trustinar. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, hedge against that and donate troops to them. So what ended up happening is when I had the um, the disband, and what's really strange to me is that uh, when I disbanded, uh, Yanshui left because Yanshui didn't cost any um, morale to keep. But uh, I digress. Yeah, uh, Yanshui now no longer has enough troops for me to even enlist because of the donation mechanic that is annoying and plagues me so. All right. Well, that's a lot of troops to trust in. Uh, none to Dayman. Uh, but next group I get will go to Dayman. All right, Yanshui is uh, just donated troops to settlement, which means probably recruitable. No, still not recruitable. Don't donate troops to the settlement, Yanshui, until you <laughs> you have enough to be conscripted into an army. Because the other issue and worry here is that Yanshui could um, be enlisted by another army and then is no longer under my command. Uh, uh, something I could do here. Oh, there we go. Uh, Ten recruits. I just saw that. Is that enough? Yes. Good. Yanshui should be rallying to me now. And Aaron of Batania. So if Batania took that... Oh, they just grabbed it right out from under me. Erdogan, I am going to engage you in a field battle then. It's funny that all this time, I have not yet managed to uh, fight a battle, uh, a defense of a castle, or town, or whatever. Just because they're so rare. 
Uh, this... I don't want it. Oh, okay, well, give it to me and I'll gift it to Ira. That's fine. It's funny that I'd have to spend influence to... Uh, uh, to give it to someone. Or I could just take it and gift it. Uh, so... Let's see. Kingdom tab, clans. Pethros, you have the least. So, fiefs. Gift to Pethros. My relationship increased almost to max. So Jacqueline is more or less unguarded as a result of uh, the recent siege. I'm moving at 2-7, they're moving at 2-9. Ooh, they turned around. Very not a healthy thing for you to do. Ah, uh, we caught you. Oh, I am so hoping that I actually will kill you, Mr. King of Valandia. So we have a knight battle. It's a two-thirds, one-third. I outnumber them two to one. Looks to be relatively open field, which is good for my tactics and strategies. There is a little bit of a nubbin. I don't know what to call it, other than a nubbin. A little bit of a nubbin there. Um, I use the same old tactics every time, and it seems to work pretty well. All right, horses, you do have to get out of my way. They are stacking up. Uh, actually, everybody follow me. They uh, they lined up somewhere very different than I expected them to. They took a hill. And rotated on me. All right, you guys got to stop cutting me off, though. No! Good job, Bash. Must have hit one. Oh, Damien just killed one. They don't have a lot of cavalry. I am surprised. This is a very light on horses uh, army. They're just getting pelted hardcore. Now, I do have to remind myself that I am against Valandians with their, uh, their stupid couched lancers. Tactics be changed a bit. I've just released all my riders. Yeah, riding, basically the tactic change would be riding straight on to Valandian, a uh, horseman, is a very, very deadly venture because of the couched lances. You gotta take them at an angle. And even then, you're not necessarily safe. You're just safer. Let's see if I can't go for passes. Galants, who cares? They're king and vassals. That's who I'm after. I don't see any that obviously would, uh... Oh, let me get out of here. Alright, tell the horsemen to regroup. I don't need them, uh, endangering themselves. Bye-bye, knight. Got you in the back swing. And the front swing. Alright, telling the footmen to push up.
Yeah, I think all the vassals that existed in this fight... No, that's not true. I just saw Arwa and uh, someone else I didn't catch their name in the kill feed knocking out my own troops. So they must still have... Um... There goes Arwa. <laughs> Spotted her from a mile off. As nice as it is, as it is to have um, a horse that has armor on it, it does make you stand out and make it very easy for me to uh, to spot you in a crowd and take you take you down. Well, this was an incredibly one-sided fight. I barely got injured. Can't say the same about my horse, but uh, I'm satisfied with the results of piles of dead red and essentially very oh wow look at that ratio 26 to 400 or so just shy of 400 baroness arwa uh are you oh i yeah oof how do you not dislike me more uh you're free to go because i thought i kind of looked like you wow i really 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 do and I widowed you. Uh, I believe I killed Belgir myself. Uh, Otto here, you are my prisoner. You're just a mercenary, but I want you out of the way. And Cervic, um, I'm going to imprison you too, because honestly, uh, yeah, I'm going to imprison everyone. I'm going to take them off the field, off the board. Uh, so the amount of prisoners I have is, or available to me, is a simply absurd, ridiculous number of people. That is ridiculous. I'm just going to pluck from the high levels and uh, leave the rest. It's not often I get uh, landing sergeants. I only have 10. Most of my uh, troops go th through the um, uh, through the upgrade uh, path of of becoming uh, cavalry. All right, uh, one over uh, there. Now, almost almost all of my troops are now Valandian and are recruitable as a result. All right, back to Jacqueline where I can ransom off most of these guys and also capture it. And Galther just created an army. Where is his army? I haven't a clue, but it looks like uh, Batania is making, uh, they're making, they're making waves, and Ves Vescarane Castle got captured by Valandia. I don't really care, or uh, not Valandia, Batania, excuse me, but I don't really care if Batania takes stuff, I'm just trying to shut down uh, Valandia. That's, that's pretty much my sole goal, um, and I'm going to ignore everything else that's going around, unless it's easy for me to deal with. That would be the caveat. So if it's easy for me to deal with, like if it's a peace treaty that I can cheaply and easily sign, you know, sign or whatever, uh, I'll do that. But all right, Azurai just declared war on the Southern Empire. Doesn't really have any effect on me. I wonder if the king is. Uh, I wonder... Oh, yeah. He... No, he escaped from captivity already. Darn. That was fast. Squirrely little bastard. So this is my own town, and I'm not going to want to do more damage than I need to to retake it. So... Going to just do the typical sieges that you've seen me do. Take out their siege equipment, and... Go up the walls. Uh, let's switch around the gear again. And retaking towns that I have lost seems to be my specialty. There needs to be an achievement for it because that seems to be all I do. Lose a town, take a town. Oh, there we go. A bunch of Batanians take a prisoner by me. And then Northern Empire took a castle that Kuzate took for me. I mean, hey... If everybody goes to war with everybody else, that does reduce my sort of uh, the pressures. 
Okay, that's enough. Send troops. I'm going to... Oh, I didn't mean to send troops. I meant to fight that myself. But okay. That makes that a little bit faster. I like to fight them myself because... Um, the ratio of wounded and dead are lower. Show mercy. Tavern district. Ransom. All right, I'm going to keep five of each high-level type. And... Get rid of the rest. I know cherry-picking the, only the highest levels means that I won't really be able to recruit them all that often. Uh, but, I'll, uh, you know, let's do three. That's how picky I'm going to be. So I get about six grand... Trade. I haven't traded it in a while. Cool. 30 grand. Now I'm almost, I'm pushing a mill now. Um, keep. Garrison. Take my troops back. And dungeon. Because I probably am going to end up owning Jacqueline, I could put the, uh, I could put the prisoners, the royal prisoners in there. Why are you chasing my party? I don't think you want that. Okay, and let's head over to Hungard Castle. It looks to be under siege and probably by Valandians. But hopefully in Galther, Galther has about 600 troops or so. Hopefully in Galther can, um, oh, for real? All right. I know you're a mercenary, but for, for real, Stop it. This is ridiculous. I just left. What do you think I wasn't going to turn back around and stomp you? Yeah, I'm obviously going to turn back around and stomp you. Uh, so, Trustin. Where is Trustin? Um, let's see. I'm actually going to release Calatild. And have Kyle to hopefully run him down because I'm not going to reconscript him. Her. Oh, there he goes. Radan. I've captured Radan in the past. Totally not amused no! that he tried a like one man raid. And I don't have my wrong fire. But it's fine. If I could spot Randan, that would be great, yeah? That looks like him. No, it's just a Gulam. Quit throwing axes at me. Another Gulam. All right, so they were all Gulam. Unless that's right in. Nope, another Gulam. Gulam. I don't know where Red Ann is. Gulam. Yep, just a bunch of Gulams. is a bit one-sided. I'm not really sure they accomplished anything or got anyone killed or even wounded. But given how much they were outnumbered, doesn't much surprise me. Oh, Radan's still up. I just saw him in the kill feed. Or rather, he was up until someone knocked him out. Yeah, literally no wounded, no death. Just straight 
destroyed. Calatild, very happy that I went and helped her, but why wouldn't I? Uh, I don't want the Sea Raiders, even though I could have gifted them out to my uh, companion armies. And that has been resolved. Nice and tidy. Okay, heading over to Hungard. And hopefully Calatild will start her own army. Okay, Hungard is not under siege, so whoever was besieging it, uh, let's see. Hungard Castle was by Fuln Fulnhard. Uh, and I'm going to have to track the, where he goes, because he's probably going to besiege something else, if not Hungard. Jaglin goes to me. Thank you very much. So, so far against Batani, we are up one. And... Uh, again, I mean, I think it's Volandia, we're up one. Against Batania, we're at least down one. But I'm not worried about anything but Volandia. I am just full vendetta against Volandia and their stupid king who picks stupid fights over and over and over, bothering me to no end. Yanshui has much more, many more troops than previous. All right, uh, Jacqueline is besieged by a rest of the Brotherhood. He is uh, a mercenary. I'm just gonna hope that, uh, what's his name down there? Uh, Ingalther. No, Ingalther, don't go to vest, vest. He's going to a castle to besiege. What a dummy, go defend Jacqueline, dude. Oh, I hate you so much right now. And there's really nothing I could do about that. I mean, I can't teleport down there or anything like that. I could have left a garrison, but I have to pay for garrisons, so I don't tend to leave garrisons everywhere I go. You'd think, you'd think, that in Galthor, traveling to Sargat, maybe, maybe he'll turn around. We'll, we'll see. Whoa, Mingus, you are deep in weird territory. Why are you all the way over here? Alright, Drapend. I don't know who whole take your whole owned Drapend. And if I capture this and no one else captures anything else that I hold, I would be up to against Valandia this episode. So Valandia right now, I'm up three total. Um Kuzate, they're up two, and Batania, they're up three. Look at the Sea Raiders freaking out. Keep on wiggling, keep on wiggling. Okay, Hongard Castle is also besieged again. Uh, Abiletos is heading to uh, Hongard. That's helpful. And Galther, you suck. He's not heading to anywhere to defend. He's just attacking Batania. I really wish that you could, uh, at the least, at the least, order troops around. Oh, fudge, I did it again. Um, there we go, like nothing ever happened. for the catapults, please. Calatil just got taken prisoner. Uh, so much for releasing her, hoping that she makes an army. Arwa is against... Oh, that's funny. I'll let Arwa go and she only... Well, I mean, she does what she's paid to do, right? Which is to refight me. 
But Kalatil's already escaped. That was the shortest captivity I ever. Uh, I do have sword board, which is the weapons I want for this fight. I'm going to leave my uh, catapults uh, uh, enlisted and engaged so that they help me out in this fight because I love cracking castles as I besiege them. Um, there is no shortcuts because there are no ladders. Uh, but yeah, this looks like a relatively familiar layout of a castle. Just like the last castle I besieged. So let's go under the moat to protect ourselves from the crossbow. And get mired in the mud. Come on, you want me? I'm out here. I was gonna hide under the moat like a troll, but... Caution to the wind, man. Uh. Not sure where that arrow came from. I really don't like this castle layout, though. I saw you. Come on, peek back out. Whoa, that was close. Because of the long run up on the left side, that siege tower takes forever to commit. And then, well, on the other hand, once it gets there, there tends not to be really defenders over there. T depends to be a very lightly defended wall because it's so ridiculously out of the way. Imagine being this superior and armed and lucky, um, where you are just a bow woman out, way out in the open, challenging anyone in an entire castle to fire at you, and they die by the dozens. This is what we call being a boss looks like. They dare not peek, for they know what happens to the peekers. Right, well, the better am is going. curious how many kills I have so far. I'm just about out of, uh, out of arrows, but I feel like a ridiculous portion of their troops have died. I killed 26 with my, uh, with my bow and arrow. Okay, let's go. Time for the real heroics. I can already hear them fleeing. And this is why the British invented the Q. <laughs> oh, I, it always amuses me how absolutely terribly troops care, uh, climb up these ladders. They're not one by one or three by three, it's just a weird blobby blitz where there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to how they climb. They eventually, oh, come on. I, there we go. They eventually make it, but not after considerable effort. Oops, that was a friendly. That was also friendly. I'll just stop firing. There's really... Yep, I'm only hitting friendlies now. Five, four, six, five... 
four, three, two, one, done. 15 deaths for a castle is not bad. Very few prisoners. Most everybody, I suppose, died. Uh, show mercy. Uh, Yanshui, Dayman, they all just donated troops to the garrison, so I can't forget to take the garrison troops out, because... My, uh... My companions are dumb like that. And I'm not actually going to uh, redistribute the troops just yet, because I'm going to head into Pravind and uh, recruit and trade and ransom and sell. Uh, and if I reissued the troops now, I'd just have to do it again in a minute. What are all these? Drappen Castle, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, and Galther. Okay, we can clear these. These are old. Zooming out, it looks like we kept Hongard. Uh, I'm guessing Abiletos is to thank for that. Uh, looks like, yeah, finally the game register that I had captured Drappened. Better late than never. A ton of Batanians just got taken prisoner, which is awesome. Uh, no one left to recruit. That means my army took them. That's great. Let's do some ransoming here. Um... Done. Some trade. I don't think I need food. I've been uh, pretty good on food for a while. I could use meat and butter, cheese, beer, wine, oil. A little variety for morale, you know? And add cohesion. Oh, you know what? I don't own Pravin, so my troops wouldn't donate to that. That's good. And now we're heading over to Ox Hall. Uh, probably just about out of time. So let me uh, let me rebalance the troops here a little bit. So Yanshui has a few more. Trustin and Damon. All right, they all have about about eighty each, which is a healthy amount, I think. Valandia is down to. Oh, Trappin just got besieged. You know, I'm gonna head over there. It's close enough that I can intercept. And Azurai just declared war on me, even though I signed a peace treaty not just days ago. That is another frustrating part about this game, is uh, that there is no cooldown on peace treaties. Like, you can end up paying out the nose for a peace treaty only to have it violated within literal days later. Which is uh, absurdity. Totally absurd. Drapping Castle will also go to Ira. The newest vassal. Who supported me here? Incurian? Well, thanks, Incurian. I didn't want it, but thanks. And I'm going to end here. Obviously, next episode will crush Fornhard's army and continue pushing to the heart of Valandia. Uh, just to recap what I said in the beginning of the episode about my plan forward. I plan on trying to eliminate Valandia. I might claim victory and end the series, owning all of Valandian territory as my own kingdom. Uh, but if there's significant support for me to continue, in spite of all of the bugs and unfortunate features included in 1.5.8, uh, you'll have to voice that in the comments, because of course, 
uh, I don't want to create content for no art uh, audience. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you next episode. Farewell, everybody.